Now, we will look at the strategic human resource management, because it is closely connected to HR function. To understand the strategic management, we must first look at what is a strategy. The word strategy originates from strategos, that means, a general uh, who organizes, leads and directs his forces to the most advantageous position. So, the main emphasis of a strategy is to enable an organization to achieve a competitive advantage with its unique capabilities by focusing on present and future direction of the organization. In a classical strategic, pro strategic management process, uh, we start with establishing a mission statement. What is the mission statement? Mission statement is the statement of the reason for the organization to exist. Here, we must distinguish mission statement and vision statement as well. Mission statement is the statement of the reason to exist, wherein vision statement is about how an organization sees itself in the long term. Vision may not get implemented in the near future or even foreseeable future vision by definition has to be inspiring. Mission also has to be inspiring, but this gives the reason for existence and mission is more related to regular engagement of the organization with its various stakeholders. So, after establishing mission and vision statement, organization need to keep analyzing the external environment they need to conduct an internal organizational analysis. Many of you must have come across uh, terms like SWOT analysis or BCG matrix or G 3 by 3 matrix or uh, McKinsey's 7 S framework. These are some of the examples of doing internal organizational analysis. Based on the internal organizational analysis, we set the specific goals. Goal setting thing got a Setting a specific goal has been understood very well in the moment of management by objective. The moment was started by Peter Drucker in 60s and 50s. There was lot of emphasis on mutual goal setting, translating the strategic goals into the operational goals and translating the organizational operational goals to the departmental goals and so on and so forth at the level of employees. And that that has to be done with the mutual agreement and negotiation uh, between the different levels of organization, different hierarchical levels of the organization. So, uh, uh, after doing the inter, uh, organizational analysis, business organization need to set the specific goals, then examining the possible strategic choices. A thing cannot be called a strategy if that does not involve choice. There has to be certain choices for a disposition to be called a strategy. What are the most general, what are the most prominent choices a business organization faces? We are going to look at in a short while, but adoption and implementation of choice is the very next step after the setting and specific goals. And then this process has to be supported by regular monitoring, regular evaluation. Mission, vision, strategic option, long term objectives, if they are set up and the follow up is not taken regularly, if the uh, matrices, uh, matrices are not developed to regularly check the uh, uh, movement of the organization, departments, functions teams and employees, that, that strategy cannot get implemented. So, the regular evaluation is equally important aspect of the strategic management process. In the real life, 
you might have come across in many business organizations. If you ask what is your strategic document, many organization may not have a strategic document, but organizations generally have a long term objective and they have a tentative theory based on which they wish to achieve those objectives. A strategy actually emerges in response to evolving situation and as a result of that it, one document may not be, remain relevant for a very long time, but there is a essential feature which is the interaction of the business and environment at the interface of which strategy evolves. Effective strategies combine a deliberation and control with flexibility and organization learning. What it means? It means there is a equally important aspect called reflection at the organizational level along with action for strategy formulation. Organization once set up the strategy need to keep scanning the environment and should be flexible enough to change the course of action. Organization also have to keep learning like individual which learn in order to cope up with environment, which learn in order to respond to the external stimulus or external stimuli, organizations also have to learn. Like individual, where learning may start with intuition or concrete experience and may lead to abstract, abstraction, conceptualization and experimentation, business organizations also can look at the learning in the form of their insights, in the form of observations of those insights, application of some of the actions arising out of those insights and institutionalization of some of the systems processes within the organization. So, a strategy is a dynamic process that includes reflection, learning and has to have flexibility. A long term business strategy must be based on core idea about how the firm can best compete in marketplace. So, popular term for this core idea is called generic strategy. Generic strategies are generally of three types. You study, you look at this slide column wise. So, there are three types of generic strategies proposed in the literature, the cost leadership, differentiation and niche. According to the generic strategy, management processes and system are differently designed and implemented in any business organization. According to generic strategies, organizations and people working in those organization require different sets of competencies and resources. So, now we will look at the different management processes, systems, competency and resource required to implement three different generic strategies. First is cost leadership. An organization following the cost leadership claims or aims at providing good or services at the cost which no other competitor can provide in a particular market. So, naturally the processes, the management processes and system in the organization following the cost leadership has to be efficiency driven. These organization operates on the economies of the scale and in these organization following the processes masterfully efficiently following the processes is the essence of the management system. So, we can also imagine what is the kind of competencies required in the management in an organization which is following the cost leadership. So, the 
first and foremost the organizations following cost leadership has to operate at the tight cost control. They have to have a tight management control system as well to ensure uh, to lock any pilferage in the resources. Generally, organizations following cost leadership has to have a structured organizational responsibility. There has to be a predictability to enhance efficiency in any system and that predictability comes with the clear structure of the organizational responsibility. It is also must be noted that organizations following the cost leadership generally measure their performance in the form of very objective and measurable parameters. In order to have objective and measurable parameters, organization responsibility have to properly structured and communicated. Second generic strategy is called differentiation. An organization following differentiation strategy aims at providing services or product which no other competitor can offer in the marketplace. So, naturally, these organizations are innovation driven, they are generally driven by unique capability. Many of you might be thinking about Apple as an example, which is following the strategy of differentiation. These are organizations which are generally engineering excellence. You see in the Apple products, they are engineering marvel as well as design marvel. When an organization is aiming at providing services or product which no other business organization is capable of providing in the marketplace, naturally they have to have a strong emphasis on R and D, but that R and D cannot be for the R and D sake, that R and D or research and development cannot be for just knowledge creation. It has to result into some product and services which customers must value. Because of this requirement, the R and D department of the organizations following differentiation strategy has to work in the very close collaboration with marketing department. They provide incentives to their managers and employees not on the efficiency, but they provide most valuable incentive to their managers and employees for value adding innovations. They have to be very flexible and have to develop agile organizational system. Third generic strategy is called niche or focused. When an organization is providing a service or product, which is uniquely entertained, which is uniquely desirable by a niche of a market segment, just a slice of a huge market, we can call organization following the niche strategy. Niche strategy is emerges at the combination towards a particular segment. So, whatever is most desirable for a particular segment, they closely build the association with the customers. That is why the customer intimacy is a very important feature of organization following the niche strategy. They consistently offer unique product and within that segment, they keep improving the product as well. Many of you might be thinking about uh, some uh, product like Harley Davidson or in India Bullet. If you look at the total uh, market size of the Harley Davidson in comparison to the uh, general all uh, motorbikes that may not be very high, but their customer segment is very committed for that product. And this company the Bullet or Harley Davidson closely work with their customer segment in order to create the events, in order to uh, 
uh, build a community among themselves, etcetera. So, these are the examples of organizations following the niche generic strategy. Looking at this description, you can see how HR function will be very different in organizations following different generic strategies. For example, recruitment. Recruitment in an organization following cost leadership will look at the efficiency oriented parameters and competencies amongst its prospective employees. Whereas, a recruitment process in organization following differentiation strategy will look at the innovativeness, will look at the high qualification and experience of uh, developing novel things, thoughts, services or product in any new recruit in the organization. Organization following the niche strategy will aim at recruiting people who have a strong knowledge base about that particular niche or that particular product, uh, which organization is uh, servicing or offering. Similarly, we can look at how the training and development function will be different in the organization following uh, different generic strategy. So, if we take the example of training and development, training and development in the organization following cost leadership will be focused on efficiency, following the systems and processes, making people aware of the best practices etcetera. Whereas, in the differentiation, the emphasis of training and development of the employees in the organizations will be about helping them to innovate more, helping them in creative thinking etcetera. Whereas, the training and development function in an organization following the niche strategy will be aiming at uh, making the employees more well versed and bring the employees closer to the preferences and needs of their specific of needs of their segment which they are very specifically serving. Similarly, we can look at the functions like compensation management, time management, performance management system etcetera, how they will be different in the organizations following different generic strategies. What are the deliverables of the HR function? We need to understand that deliverable for production function is to produce as many product, uh, product as possible in as less time as possible. So, here we uh, park our discussion on the connection of the strategy and HR function.